Technology has progressed enormously over the past 200 years, but the debate surrounding its effects has not. And we are now living through another period of automation and anxiety. And, and this is something that has featured in various points in history. Back in 1929, for example, the New York Times published this article on the fate of the lamplighters. So since the 1500s, lamplighters had been an occupation that featured in most neighborhoods and was an institution alongside the local police and, and the post office. But with the electrification of city lights, they were threatened and lamplighters disappeared over a matter of just a few decades. Now, even the lamplighters mostly willingly agreed that you know, electrification um, of light had its virtues, but that didn't keep them from resisting a threat to their jobs. There's been a tendency to ridicule people that resist new technologies. And when I was an undergrad in economic history, um, I was told that the very last thing we should worry about is machinery and technology taking people's jobs because uh, economic growth was stagnant for millennia uh, and only actually took off with the first machine age, with the introduction of machinery in production that allowed us to produce much more with fewer people. Now, that is not to suggest that economic activity was completely stagnant prior to then, and there was a lot of inventions before then. But there were very few machines that actually were used um, in production. And it is indeed those machines that allowed us to produce more with fewer people, and as a result of that, people are roughly 40 times richer today, adjusted for inflation um, than they were in 1750. Now, you might ask, how much uh, does, it, or does it make sense even to compare incomes in 1750 with incomes today? Because the consumer basket that you can purchase for your income is very different today than it was back then. So people during the early days of the Industrial Revolution can only look after the lives of the wealthy in envy who had servants to do the most tedious things for them. Today, all of us here have access to the electric servant in terms of dishwashers, washing machines, vacuum cleaners, and so on, that relieve us of a lot of tedious work, uh, not to mention antibiotics and automobiles. And indeed, technology has had a tremendous equalizing effect in terms of our consumption possibilities as well. And, and if that wasn't enough evidence of progress, consider the fact that earning those higher incomes and producing those new goods and services has become much more comfortable as well. At the dawn of the Industrial Revolution, a lot of people worked in coal mines. They didn't see daylight for weeks. Cavens and explosions were part of everyday working life. Lung disease often came as part of the work package. Today, the majority of us work in air-conditioned offices. Uh, I think... The hardest day in recent memory at Oxford Martin School was when the coffee machine broke down. And I think, you know, you need to put things in perspective. So I think the long-run story of mechanization is clearly one that has benefited us all. Unfortunately, I think it's also only half of the story. Now, the Industrial Revolution is essentially what laid the foundations for the modern world. Um, and I think it's in interesting just to take a step back and think about what people actually said and thought at the time. So Benjamin Disraeli, for example, before he became Prime Minister of Britain, published a novel called Coningsby in 1848, in which one character remarks that I see cities people with machines. Certainly Manchester must be the most wonderful place of modern times. The very same year, Frederick Engels published his uh, Conditions of the Working Classes in England, which was written during a stay in precisely Manchester. And Engels had a very different take on the matter. He argued that machinery only serves to downgrade people, uh, um, takes people's jobs, and puts downward pressure on workers' wages. 
Um, now, we all know that he was wrong about the future, but he was actually fairly on target about the period he observed. Because even as the British economy took off, wages were stagnant and probably even <coughs> falling at the lower end of the income distribution. The future of technological progress and economic growth actually depends a lot on what people believe. And if people think that they are going to benefit from this over the short, medium, and long term, people are likely to willingly accept um, automation. But if they don't think so, uh, they are much more likely to resist it. Um, and one of the key points is that the reason that the first industrial revolution actually happened in Britain was that for the first time in Britain, governments actually sided with innovators and pioneers of industry rather than angry workmen. The craft guilds, which persisted all across Europe up until the 19th century, had no interest in any machinery being implemented that threatened their skills and incomes, and fearing social unrest, government typically sided with the guilds. Thank you.